of the innards of the uh, Revox. This is the motor for the pinch roller. It doesn't seem to be a problem in terms of this aspect of it. I see no need to do anything from this side of the unit. I powered up the Revox bypassing its safety interlock, which is part of the wooden case, with this unit right here, which is actually supplying it with uh, complete the full voltage that it needs, as far as I can see. I'm just going to rearrange things now, and I have to get to work on making the capstan motor function again. Okay, the Revox is powered on, and let's see if this uh, capstan function. Capstan is rock solid. see. Okay, the capstan is frozen. bombarded it with uh, can I move it yes I am managing to move it it's slowly coming to life I'm going to get it slowly turning on its own I'm going reverse doesn't want to do that come on capstan and more oil. And again. Let's have a look at this in more detail. That's the situation. The capstan is still resisting. And as I'm spinning it, well, yeah, I'm getting, starting to loosen up, but <laughs> not by a whole lot. And it's, it doesn't seem to be interested in uh, Okay, now it was starting to move on its own. It's moving, but at a snail's pace. The capstan motor is what determines the speed of the tape, nothing else. I'm going in reverse now, sort of jugging it back and forth. It's a synchronous AC motor. It should uh, <laughs> hypothetically start to respond to all of this coaxing that I've been giving it. No, 
slowly seek, seeping in that oil. No, it's a uh, reluctant to cooperate in any way. I guess this will have to uh, be something that I uh, resolve in due course. I have to do some voltage measurements and determine what's going on with this capstan motor because it's clearly receiving voltage. I mean, if I turn it in reverse, I'm getting, I'm getting resistance. I'm getting no particular resistance if I spin it in the correct direction. So that's an indication to you that, you know, the, uh, the circuit is there. There's just something that just caused the capstan motor to call it quits. And move it up. Yep. Absolutely no action. What you're looking at here has the makings of a superior front end for frequency modulation. You've got two complete front ends, one and two, and you've got an intermediate tuning capacitive stage here and here. Now this is a fairly simple one. It's basically just connecting the uh, various points of the two front ends together and capacitively coupling them. This one here on the other hand is a more involved one. It's uh, as complex a tuning capacitor as is in here and here. What this is, is a tuned radio frequency front end like no other. And if my guess is correct, it shall be an extremely discriminating front end presenting the intermediate frequency stage with a 10.7 megahertz signal that is pretty much exact because it is tuned very carefully across this set of controls, these tuning capacitors. Now this distance here that I'm measuring out, you can't see my hand here, but if you could, that distance is 17 inches. So this will fit quite nicely into a standard EIA rack mount device. So you put it into a 17 inch cabinet and it fits into a night, you put a 19 inch rack mount front panel on it. And those controls will be uh, displaced across. And this front end literally only outputs a front end. So it needs to go to a diversity tuner of some sort that can take the first intermediate frequency signal, which is what this thing puts out, right? The first intermediate frequency. So that first IF is basically what this front end is delivering. And you can see, well, right there in the very center of the picture is the 10.7 megahertz IF transformer that is IF1 in the circuit. Now, all of these components, these tuning capacitors, exist for one sole reason. 
to narrowly select in on one frequency and one frequency to the exclusion of all others. It is this that allows this front end to deliver a signal to a suitably uh, responsive intermediate frequency stage, a signal that, well, has no comparison because no one has ever done TRF and FM, except uh, I guess I'm just about to do it. So uh, when the, this thing is finished, this, this is on the back burner, I gotta tell you, I ain't gonna get around to this one for a while. But you're looking at something down the pipe. Okay, lots of excitement in the world of electronics. There's a lot that you can learn and a lot that you can do with old vacuum tube electronic equipment.